Hello and welcome to part two of series one, Astronomy for GAN Traders. This is Planetary Revolutions and Cycles. The planets spin around the sun in ellipses, which are a type of oblong circle. In astronomy, the beginning point of the zodiac is zero Aries, which is where we measure from. The following is a close approximation of the revolutions of the planets, i.e. the time it takes the planet heliocentrically to begin at zero Aries and to move through the zodiac to return again at zero Aries, known as a circle or revolution. Here we have heliocentric planetary revolution periods. Mercury, 88 days. Venus, 224 days. Earth, 365.24 days. Mars, 687 days or 1.88 years. Jupiter, 12 years. Saturn, 29.5 years. Chiron, 50.2 years. Uranus, 84 years. Neptune, 164.8 years. Pluto, 247.7 years. And Transpluto, 660 years. You may wonder where Transpluto comes from. Jensen, uh, which was Gann's partner from the early 1930s to Gann's death in 1955, wrote in the early 1930s about Transpluto, which had a period, he said, in his book of 660 years. Chiron at 50.2 years is also used in some astrological systems. Okay? When we combine planets, we start when they are at the same degree of the zodiac, which is a conjunction, until they are again conjunct. These are known as synodic periods. Okay? Some of the important synodic periods Mercury Earth averages 116 days. Venus Earth averages 584 days. Those are, of course, heliocentric. Jupiter Uranus averages 14 years. Jupiter Saturn averages 20 years. Saturn Uranus averages 45 years. That means from when the time they occupy the same degree of the zodiac until they again occupy the same degree of the zodiac, those are synodic periods. You may wonder what I mean by heliocentric or geocentric. In astronomy, heliocentric view, the view is from the sun, as if the individual was from the sun looking out at the planetary positions. In geocentric astrology, okay, it is the individual on Earth looking out where are the planets in the zodiac at that point. Okay, that's the difference between heliocentric and geocentric. Now for synodic periods, these are there are others, but these are some of the most important that we have found. Okay? An example of a planetary revolution is that of Uranus at 84 years, as we saw up here. Uranus at 84 years. Taking the 1776 American Revolution and add in 84 years gives 1860. Start of the Civil War. Remember, we started in the 1776, which is the American Revolution i.e. war. 1860 is the start of the Civil War. Adding another period of 84 years to that gives World War II. Another revolution will bring us to another revolution of Uranus will bring us to the year 2028 which will be another conflict. An example of a synodic period is that of Jupiter-Saturn at 20 years. Okay, Every 20 years Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct. If we begin that conjunction in the year 1900 we get a Every occurrence of this brings a recession. Add, okay, 19, the year 1900 was a recession. Add in 20 years gives 1920, which timed another recession. Adding another period of 20 gives 1940, which is another recession. Add in 20 to that gives 1960, which is another recession. Another 20 after that gives 1980, which was a recession. Another 20 after that gives the 2000 recession. And a final 20 gives 2020 which will be another recession. We can divide these time periods by twos and threes to get important periods as well. If we take our 20 year period and divide by two we get 10 years. Again starting from the year 1900 we would get 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940, 1950, 1960, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, and 2010. All recession years. Another that I will start you off on, which is the conjunction of Saturn and Uranus in 1988, which America experienced the savings and loan crisis okay, at the conjunction. At the opposition of that cycle between Saturn and Uranus, 
We had the 2008 mortgage debt crisis in America. You may study this cycle from these points. There's other time periods in there as well. Astrologers have given names to certain angles created by two planets. Most well known are zero degrees, which is a conjunction. 60, when planets are 60 degrees apart, it's called a sextile. When planets are 90 degrees apart, it's called a square. When planets are 120 degrees apart, it's called a trine. And when planets are 180 degrees apart, it is called an opposition. In geocentric astrology, Jupiter and Saturn made the following aspects on the following days. Okay. We have the conjunction at zero degrees of separation, which is July 23rd, 1981. And we can see here Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct here on July 23rd, 1981. Our next aspect is the sextile which is 60 degrees of separation between Jupiter and Saturn which occurred on January 22nd 1985 as you can see here Jupiter and Saturn are sextile which is 60 degrees apart this is the glyph for sextile our next aspect between the two was a square at 90 degrees on April 2 1986 here we have the square between this is Jupiter up here and this is Saturn the square between Jupiter and Saturn on April 2nd 1986 our next aspect was a trine of 120 degrees which occurred on March 18 1988 this is what the trine looks like as you can see the glyph for the trine here which is a tri short for triangle okay that was March 18 1988 Next in line we have the opposition which is 180 degree, 80 degrees separation which occurred March 15, 1991. Here we have the opposition of the two planets. On March 15, 1991 this is Jupiter, Saturn, this is the glyph for opposition. Next in line we move to the trine because we've passed the opposition so we have a, a trine coming back from our conjunction point of 120 degrees. This occurred August 28, 1994. Here we have a trine of the two planets, uh, Saturn over here and Jupiter over here. Now, what you've noticed is because Jupiter moves faster, Jupiter has a revolution, like we said, of 12 years. Saturn moves slower. It has a revolution of 29.5 years. So as you see, Jupiter is, is, is moving closer. Okay, it's moving closer. It's coming back in. Next in line, we have a square of 90 degrees, which occurred November 11th, 1995. Here we have the geocentric square between Jupiter and Saturn. Next in line is the uh, sextile of 60 degrees, which occurred February 9, 1997. Here you can see the uh, sextile on February 9, 1997. Jupiter again getting closer to Saturn. And last but not least, on May 28, 2000, we again have the conjunction. They again occupy the same degree of the zodiac. So what we've seen is a, one complete revolution of 360 years, okay? And it, it averages about, tw I'm sorry, 360 degrees, and it averages about 20 years on average, okay? Now you may ask why the market did not turn, why your market did not turn on these geocentric aspect dates. These are what are called mundane background cycles. They give indication of the economic, of the economy. Other types of cycles, time highs and lows. The virtue of anything is in its use. What I mean by that is that these are not supposed to time markets to the day. These are meant as economic background cycles. You can find more of that in Luther Jensen's book uh, Astro Cycles and Speculative Markets which I highly recommend and no I do not sell it. This concludes Series 1, Part 2. What I want to do is tell you we're at www.wheelsinthesky.com or visit our Yahoo site, Wheels in the Sky, all one word. We'll see you there.